pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we're so happy to know that you are here with your bride, that you have come to head her up to be her head, headstone, capstone, as Brother Branham said, is here. We had a capstone ministry. We have the capstone word. We have him who is our great seal, the great sealer himself, taking the bride away. And as Brother Branham said, if we're not bride, there's a bride out there somewhere. And by the grace of God, we will not get in her way. And yet, even as he said to each one of us to believe that we are a part, we would very, very foolishly, Lord, I don't know how we'd do it. How could we deny we are a part when we have come so far along in this word, knowing you face to face and knowing the mysteries, the word of God and the truth of Almighty God, that we might worship you in spirit and in truth, which by grace, through your own predestinating power, you have given us, and we have now arrived in that position. So we thank you, Lord, that we are part of that great new Jerusalem. And there we enter in, Lord, physically into that place which you have ordained and are preparing for us. May we, Lord, knowing we shall come to that place of perfection, you have granted that we could come to, Lord, and we rejoicing, leave here with great rejoicing, and even more so in your presence yonder, at the great marriage supper. Help us to understand your word as never before. In Jesus' name we pray, man. You may be seated. <clears throat> now tonight I'm going to go into uh, vindication and presence. Not that we haven't done it before, but uh, no matter how many times you can view the subject, you always find that there is actually more to it as uh, applies to this present hour. And there again, we find that uh, even though we do come to uh, more viewpoints or uh, more facets of the truth, it is not as though we had not uh, uh, understood them in the sense of having uh, them been revealed to us, but it's that we see them even more clearly. And as you see them more clearly, uh, you begin to, uh, therefore, through your revelation, your deeper understanding, have a greater faith, the type of faith which is uh, irrevocable because it has been given by God. And also, <clears throat> it is basically indestructible because you can do nothing against the truth but for it. That's something that most people don't realize. They think that the uh, truth is, can be destroyed. The Bible says otherwise. The truth cannot be destroyed. The truth stands there, and as, even as the human uh, resources of the mind say that the sword is, the pen is mightier than the sword, it is very true that word, and um, that's the word of God is truth, that word is truth, will endure, and only those who are a part of it will endure with it. And of course, the truth gives us who already have the in during qualities of God, further powers of endurement in the face of problems which face us. And uh, <clears throat> so we want to read here, first of all, in Romans 15, uh, where Paul is speaking of his vindication as he does in various other places. So in Romans 15, uh, 15 to 19, he says, Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in the same sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God, that I should be the transmitter of Jesus Christ, rather, I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. He was a transmitter of the gospel, but not Jesus. Ministering the gospel of God, and you notice he doesn't call it the gospel of Jesus Christ. He calls this the actual word of Almighty God that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. I have therefore, of, I may glory through Jesus Christ in these things which pertain to God, for I dare not to speak of those, any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me, uh, to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed, through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and around about Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Now, <clears throat> Paul goes on into the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, which fortunately seems to follow Romans very nicely. 
And in the second chapter, he says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, or even of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Now, you notice what he's saying there. He said, I never came to you, he said, with words. And if I had to come to you with words, then he said, it would have been simply the wisdom of man. Now, <clears throat> there's something you might notice that this happened in America. A man by the name of Joe Smith, formerly a Methodist, told everybody that he had angels approach him and there he was given sheets of gold with strange writing upon it, which he was able to interpret, which brought out the Book of Mormons. The man was a hoax and full of baloney. It, it, words of man's wisdom, he appealed to people, tickling their ears and bringing the specious doctrines. He never had one ounce of vindication from God. He had no power whatsoever. The Word of God does not come through verbosity. It comes through power. Manifestation which is beyond human being. Which no one can produce under any circumstance. And if trying to produce it in the face of the vindicated prophet, he could be carried out dead as we saw in the scripture, or brought to naught, because you cannot stand up against the power of God. We'll see this more and more as we go along. So Paul said, I never came <clears throat> with enticing words. He came with dynamic vindication, dynamic words. Words which he could well speak, having been vindicated by whatever and whoever's name he spoke in. That person behind him, that God, that individual, that force, that power, that spirit, invisible, but manifesting through that person, showed there was a power in control beyond the person. Now that is denigrated into a type of foolish spiritism, where spirits take care a hold of people. And those that observe them think that, my, this is wonderful, I'll just touch that person. You can go to Haiti and you can just see it all over the place. It's, <clears throat> that's the most devil-possessed place in the world. We're even written up by Seabrook, uh, Seagrave, uh, oh, Seabrook, a, a very uh, fine author. <clears throat> and people uh, then will fall for that, but there's nothing to it. See, one is enticing, the other's words, tickling the ears, Gnosticism, making the people think they know something. This is where you know something. Understand what I'm saying? The indication is you know that you know that you know. You don't have to worry about anything else. <clears throat> By the way, let's face it. You show me any place in the scripture outside of maybe Hebrews and Galatians, book of Acts, mentioned in the Gospels, but I take you to Paul. And personally, right off the bat, <clears throat> I don't know that Paul mentioned Abraham more than four or five times, and I don't know if he ever said, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What he said was, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are fine, but I'm not interested. I have nothing to do with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. I'm not fellow flesh of them whatsoever. I have no link to them. And Paul deliberately broke all links to that. And when he said that he was talking and being talked to by 
the one who empowered him as he brings this out in vindication, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And let me say without fear of my critics or anybody here tonight, I have no interest in any God at all except the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that Brother Branham proclaimed. I don't know Paul. I never met Paul. I hope to see him, to meet him, and talk with him. But I have talked with, and dealt with, and lived with, and been a companion, and heard William Branham vindicated by God. And I worship and serve the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ have presented by William Brown. And if he tells me by vindication, this is the same one, the same pillar of fire that met Paul, met him, I say, hallelujah. Now I've got two of them. But I've got another link. Now I go back to Moses. Because he said, see Lee, the pillar of fire that was Moses has not appeared since the time of Paul for 2,000 years till now. Now I can take that. Now, you see, I'm a resident of the kingdom. I know my pedigree. Fully identified. <clears throat> this is what we're looking at. This man was vindicated. He said, I came not with words. I did talk. But it wasn't man's word. They weren't mine. They were put in my mouth. <clears throat> and I brought them to you. In demonstration of spirit, even of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And when you have the wisdom of men, they're called sophists, a sort of a, a chapuki term. I'll give two bits for your wisdom. What's it going to do for me? What if you were smart and wise, and you told me something that would be good for me, and I, I couldn't apprehend it? What good would it be? Your words wouldn't carry any power. These words carry power. They're full of life. And those who receive them are now enlivened with the life within the word, which is vindicated by God standing behind it, proving that life, which is God. <clears throat> so Paul is speaking here with the utmost authority. And he said, how be we speak wisdom amongst them that are perfect? <clears throat> Plain English, those that belong to the club. Belong to the bride. This is the terminology here. It just specifies who we are. We belong to the bride. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world, that come to nothing. That's what I told you a minute ago. You can be the smartest person and advise me and talk to me. And if I can't receive it, <clears throat> if I can't make it work, <clears throat> What good is it? This is not something you and I make work, but this is something that worketh within us. For the word of God is not bound. <clears throat> He's not given a spirit of fear, but of love and encouragement and sound mind. It comes to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which was ordained before the foundation, before the world. That would be, I think, the actual earth itself or the world systems under our glory which none of the princes were new. <clears throat> For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. <clears throat> now, if Joe Smith had known anything about God, he wouldn't have written that bunch of stupid books. <clears throat> wouldn't have done it. We'll talk about that maybe later on sometime, how it links up to Brother Branham's ministry, but not right at this minute. <clears throat> because the approach I have here has to do <clears throat> with Paul asserting that he is vindicated that everything he says is backed up by God because it is definitely God's word, he not having a part in it or of it or by it, but standing there being a voice that God used. And that's exactly what Brother Branham said. I don't know if I got that written down here. I did have it written down here, but you know how it is. I lose a lot of things. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't have it written down. If I read it to you at least 150 times, I'm sure, where he said, I, I know more to do than nothing. That was just the voice of one standing there. <clears throat> and that's exactly true. So, all right. Now, what I want to take you to here, <clears throat> first of all, 
is Deuteronomy chapter 18, <clears throat> where we see God using the prophet. Now, he says in verse 15, The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him you shall hearken. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire no more that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They are well spoken what they have spoken. I'll raise up a prophet among their brethren like unto thee, and I'll put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass who shall not hearken unto the words my words which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. <clears throat> but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? In other words, God's answering their question before they ask it. Like he's going to do when we come to Mount come to New Jerusalem, the pillar of fire above the throne, and before we call, he answers. <clears throat> All right, see, the Alpha and Omega situation, the unchanging God. When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not nor come to pass, that's the thing which the Lord has not spoken, but the prophet is born presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. So it tells you right here, <clears throat> the prophet that God sends is vindicated. He absolutely has to have the manifested power of God bringing to pass what has been said by Almighty God through the prophet, then the word will follow, even as it says in the book of Acts, Jesus both began to do and to teach. And as I told you many times, I used to read the Pentecostal papers and the Trinitarian dogmas and, you know, the nice brethren and their good brethren, approved of God <coughs> uh, under the old way. And they would tell you, see, there you are. You don't dare tell anybody anything till first of all, you live it. And they say, Jesus lived it, and therefore he talked it. Well, they missed Deuteronomy 18 100%. Just like the Jews, Jesus was a prophet. I don't care if he was the son of God. So were the prophets sons of God, and so were the prophets gods to the people. So what, what are they talking about? I mean, here they are fiddling around while Rome's burning. They're going to hell, and they're, 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 they're splitting hairs and nitpicking. <clears throat> what good does it do you? <clears throat> my sister-in-law told a good joke many years ago now during the war. <clears throat> she used to work in a, as a, she was a very fine cook, and so they had her as a, as a big cook in a, uh, in a hospital. <clears throat> and with her were a bunch of Danes working around. And uh, so when, when they talked to Carolyn and, and, and said, well, you mean you don't have a word in Norwegian like that? She said, no. Then they talked to her, well, you don't have a word? No. And so they began criticizing her. And so one day Hitler walked into Denmark. And she said, I suppose you were sitting around making up words while Hitler walked in. <laughs> That's touche. Words. <clears throat> words. Listen. By your words, you are condemned or justified. It all depends on what word you have. And if you have the word of power for your hour, you're justified. But if you don't have the word of power, and many people call it the word of power, don't know what they're talking about, <clears throat> for their hour, <clears throat> if they have the old word, it is moth-eaten, wiggle worms are in it, and it no longer obtains. Because that portion of word for that hour has passed away. As Brother Branham said, <clears throat> the, the revelation of this hour was spiritual food in due season. And it certainly was. Now, all right, with this scripture here, speaking of the prophet who comes in the name of the Lord and what he says follows identically, makes you to know that that is <clears throat> the true prophet who is going to bring you the word of God because the prophet is one who prophesies, who speaks forth for Almighty God. The speaking of the future is strictly inconsequential. In, for the word prophet, it is consequential only insofar as it sets the ground that this is the man you will listen to. So if he does these things, you are to listen, then what you are to listen to is the word of God not being foretold, that's already done, it's being foretold coming forth from his mouth. And his mouth is the mouth of God. <clears throat> and he is God to the people. Even as it says over here in, in Hebrews 1 and 2, hath in these last days spoken unto us in his Son, 
whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Now the previous verse tells you that he is a, that he is followed following in the pattern of all other prophets like Moses and Abraham and the rest. God has sundry times and died in manner, spake in time past <clears throat> in the fathers, spoke to them in the fathers who are prophets, and we are the children of the prophets. <clears throat> God in the prophets, whereas Brother Branham brought out so very, very carefully and perfectly that the prophet is God to the people. Now, <clears throat> you notice here, and we must notice very carefully, that as soon as the prophet comes on the scene and he is vindicated, one of two things will happen to each person. So two things happen. One is belief sets in. Secondly, unbelief sets in. Either you receive or you reject. And a man can receive nothing except it be given him from above. So therefore, there is no one but the elect who can receive the word of God, <clears throat> God in the prophet. Or as Brother Branham said, the prophet veiling Almighty God, and that prophet being veiled in that <clears throat> tremendous word of Almighty God. Now, with what we have brought to your attention, I am now going to swing to the understanding and the teaching tonight on a little further than what we have got to emphasize more thoroughly the approach which I just mentioned to this word when the prophet comes. I believe and receive, or I disbelieve and I reject. In other words, now I have become a judge. <clears throat> I have become a judge of what God has presented through vindication. I have become a judge of the word that has come forth. I have now become a judge of God, and I am either approving or disapproving. This is a position that we find ourselves in as a race of people, though the very, what I have said here, will not be taken by 99% of the people, and in that 99%, I include all the fundamentalists who would say, yes, I do go along with that, but when the chips are down, they won't go along with it. Anybody can give lip service. <clears throat> I can find that in all the writings of the country. Now, we go to 2 Corinthians 3 and 1, so you begin to understand what I am saying, and thereby begin to identify yourselves. <clears throat> because this is all a process of identification. All right, 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, and verse 1, where Paul says here, beginning, do we begin again to commend ourselves? Or need we as some others epistles of con commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? <clears throat> now Paul says right here, that I want to ask you a question. Who ordained me? Who is responsible for me? Where am I coming from? What are my roots? What's my origin? How do I stand? Oh, this man was tougher than nails. I mean, he was hard boiled. Independent is the literal hog on ice. You know, I'm criticized of being headstrong. And I am in the wrong way. Sometimes the right way. This man was more than headstrong. He was soul strong, headstrong, heart strong. <clears throat> now he said, you are epistles in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistles of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of spoon, but in fleshy tables of heart. And such trust we have through Christ to God. But he said, listen, I'm telling you guys, you, I wouldn't even be writing to you except for my ministry and my relationship to you and yours to mine through the word. <clears throat> he said, I didn't build any man's foundation. That's in the third chapter of 1 Corinthians. He stood right there and eyeballed him because these people were beginning to go astray into Gnosticism. Already they're wandering off. Paul evidently had a better opportunity than Brother Branham did to eyeball people going astray. I think so. I'm not positive <clears throat> because I can't tell. <clears throat> but what I'm reading here, although Brother Branham did say very strong things, I don't know who eyeballed who more. But anyway, 
you got to know a prophet's going to be that kind of a fellow. Now, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our backup is God. You watch how he stands for me and vindicates me. You want to try me? Brother, come up and put me in your Bible. Stand beside me. Oh, he said, you're smarter than I thought. He said, Lee, the first one would have been carried out feet first. I like that. Sometime I'll tell you a little later on how God would keep the race clean and we didn't believe him. Who also made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Now how did he do that except by the Word of God? But if the ministration of death written in graven in stones was glorious, the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance which was to be done away, then what about the one who was coming in the likeness of Moses, who was Messiah? Huh? How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be way, way more glorious? <clears throat> if they stumbled and fell, when the Spirit of God came into the temple, and the priest couldn't stand the, and the and the priest couldn't stand to minister, and that was great. Why would the Pentecostal want to stagger and fall around and be knocked over? Huh? They got staggered and knocked over then, and that was chicken feet alongside of the bullion of gold that God's got for us today. How can these people say they believe this message be fooled my guy like, what is it, Sheely the guy, that Shelly, whatever it is, that little boy from down south? He could produce nothing. All he did is mouth off. And then when they said, I believe the Bible, I don't care who said this and Brother Branham said it. They, amen, amen. Come on. Come on, I'm talking to you tonight. If they thought that was great, that ministration, what about this? That was nothing compared to this. Okay. The shouting is fine, even dancing. I don't mind that dance unto God. Don't be an idiot. <clears throat> you really can do it. Answer the spirit. I don't mind. I don't mind manifestation, demonstration. Don't think one minute because I do it all the time. But I'm, I'm talking the way Paul talked. I want to get down to what vindication is all about and who is behind it. Vindication is actually God Amen. manifesting. <clears throat> In a measure that can be apprehended absolutely and understood. And you can either say yes or no. And Jesus said, if I had not done the works no other man did, they had not sinned. But now they both seen and hated both me and my father. And their sin remaining. <clears throat> Shall not the ministration of the Spirit, what the Spirit of God is doing, be beyond comparison to this? For if the ministration of condemnation be glorious in glory, <clears throat> much more the ministration of righteousness <clears throat> exceeds in glory. Well, that's your baptism with the Holy Ghost. That's why Brother Brana said the only thing from the Old Testament that could come near the baptism with the Holy Ghost was what a prophet had. Huh? Amen. Well, words, amen. I'm, I'm quoting, quoting you the Bible and quoting why Brother Brana said it. You didn't know it was here, did you? Well, here it is. Huh? Well, come on. Got the same thing Jesus had. Doesn't make you Jesus. <clears throat> You're part of a New Testament glorious bride. <clears throat> now, for even that which was made glorious had no reason in this respect, no glory in this respect, by reason of the glory that excelleth. <clears throat> so you forget that entirely. And Paul said, I forget everything. I've rid my mind of it. <clears throat> I should have brought a piece of paper. I forgot to bring it to you. It was a, <clears throat> a director from Hollywood, Europe or somewhere, who cares? And he was trained in uh, directing. And uh, he said, what they do, you got to study and do 30 pages this, 60 pages here, and 30 here. And he said, when you get through, 
it just destroys you. He said, I've been trying for years to rid my mind of those 120 pages. And I thought, that's what Paul did. You learn a lot, a bunch of useless nonsense. When God has moved on, forget what has been left behind, move on with God. <clears throat> People can't understand that. Brother Branham said, how much glorious was Luther above the Catholics? How much Wesley above Luther? How much Pentecost above them? But this glory never fades. What Paul is talking about here, we have the genuine, true baptism with the Holy Ghost, virgin bride, virgin word, absolutely going into the millennium. Well, it better be. <clears throat> Can't be otherwise. She's all glorious within and without. And it's the washing of the water by the word <clears throat> that gives her her bridehood, recognized. And the garment. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remains is glorious. <clears throat> God moving on. Taking from Alpha right to Omega. Now listen, when he starts with Alpha, he doesn't change here and change here and change here and change here, add here and add here and add here. No, what Paul laid as the foundation and what was there, moving on, moving on. Man slapped it off, slapped it off, kept on moving, moving. God moving on, took every single thing right up to now. And what he left behind, the life has gone on. It. <clears throat> because you can't add or take a word. What one to say here? See? <clears throat> what remains today? What remains today? What there remains today? What remains today of the entire gospel is a little bride that's being child trained into adulthood, absolutely getting clothed and ready for the millennium. <clears throat> now, seeing we have such hope, we have great plainness of speech, but not as Moses would put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remain at the same veil and taken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. If they could have received Christ, <coughs> Moses was gone. Oh, it's Moses, 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 Moses. No, no, Christ, 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 Christ. It was Paul, 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 Paul. And it went downhill. Luther, Luther, Wesley, Wesley, Pentecostal. Now, William Branham, William Branham, William Branham. Well, you can do what you like about it, but he's a seven church age messenger. <clears throat> right back to perfection. Right back where the church was. Because the cornerstone has become the capstone. What was laid here is now up here. Yeah. Remember, at the top it narrows but it contains it all. I ask you a question, did Jesus contain it all or didn't he? The rest that went before him were like thieves and robbers. <laughs> they didn't have a right to it, except in a minor sense of the word. <coughs> they, they, they were just penny ante, <coughs> chickens alongside the great eagle. Now they, they, were, they were children of God, don't, don't you think they weren't? But come on, let's get the magnitude. And understand, <clears throat> even this day when Moses read the veils upon their hearts, see, they can't get shook up. They were all shook up about Moses and dead frigid, and they couldn't get shook up about Jesus. Can you imagine that? They could not get shook up about Jesus <clears throat> as really being the one. Could he be here? Let's find out. Look at this man. Kill him. He, no, he doesn't agree with us. <clears throat> Their words of wisdom were traditions and rotten and dead, and it killed them. And their blood flowed in the streets of Jerusalem and congealed there. Perhaps the dogs, and no doubt dogs, licking it up. <clears throat> All Jezebels. Had they believed, they'd have gone on with God. Now, nevertheless, it turned to the Lord. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now he's telling you right now, 
that God is here in the form of the Holy Ghost in the sense of God being with Paul and baptizing the believers. And we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed the same image from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord. <clears throat> now he's talking about the ministration of the word came with the great signs and wonders of Moses. And he said they are not even to be compared to what God did through Jesus Christ and brought forth the glory which they should be having. So forget Moses. Not that you turn your back on Moses. Moses never existed. He was a bad man or he was this or that. No, you thank God and glorify God for Moses' day. But this is Jesus' day. <clears throat> and now it's the day of God himself. <clears throat> there with the apostle Paul. And people are being baptized in the body of Jesus Christ. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, we, uh, we, uh, we have received mercy and faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty and so on. Now, I'm showing you this to show you that Paul was not commended by people. He did not want to be commended by people. He turned down people's commendation. In fact, as it were, he literally spit in their faces. He called their bluff. He put them down where they belonged. And he kept himself in the ministry of the importance that God gave him. Oh, boy, do Pentecostals like that. To them, the preachers are poor little nitwit jackasses that really belong in some institution where they go boingy, boingy in the head while the women tippy, tippy, toe along and do everything out of, in disorder in the temple of God, spit in the face of God with their high heel slippers, their short hair, and their floosy skirts and everything else. Come on, I'm calling their bluff tonight because I was amongst them. No more know about God, as Brother Man said, and the hot and talk knows about an Egyptian night, whatever that means. <clears throat> he said, I don't need your commendation. I don't need your approval. Okay, we could read on. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go to chapter 5 and verse 12, because I'm going to run out of time. <clears throat> For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that you may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is God, or whether sober it's for your cause. This man acted like an insane person at time under the presence and power of God. He acted like a nut, they might say. Are not all these drunken people? They called Jesus a nut. He's beside himself. <clears throat> I don't think it was so much what the man did to be extraordinarily different in his actions outside the power of God manifesting. I'm talking about emotions being emitted from him. But what he said, even as Agrippa said to Paul, Paul, thou art beside thyself. There's no way this could be. <clears throat> What is what he said? For we commend not ourselves again unto you. <clears throat> I'm not going through the same thing I went through when I demonstrated God's with me and, and I spoke in God's holy name and, what, and it came to pass, proving that I am the one that God vindicated as the prophet, that I am God to you. <clears throat> no, he said, I'm not going to do that. Eh? Now he said the verse above it, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust we are made manifest in your consciences. <clears throat> How could a man say that with just talking? Anybody can blab. But do it. That's what a prophet of the word does. He comes in demonstration, power of Almighty God. And Paul now has called their bluff again. And he said, listen, I'm not going over this again. And Brother Brandon said, listen to you people here. I can do this once in Africa. 30,000 people come for Christ. I do this over and over and over again here. And you get harder and harder and harder. Well, you want more. Oh, can't you see William Branham as Apostle Paul? Hallelujah. I can see him. I like it because I like Brother Branham. I can match him up with Paul just like he said he was matched with Paul. Because I believe him. See, that's the difference. Maybe people don't believe him. <clears throat> they say they do, but they don't. <clears throat> That's right. I'm not going to pull my punches on that. Let's go to 10. <clears throat> Let's go to the 12th verse. We started maybe at the beginning here. 
And Paul is talking, he says, not expedient me to doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, and the body I cannot tell, the body I can't tell, God knoweth. As such a one caught to the third heaven, I knew such a man. It wasn't body out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. You see, he couldn't tell, but it was just caught up so in, con, literally in a place of confusion almost. Caught in paradise and heard unspeakable words that's not lawful for man to utter. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I'll not glory, but in mine infirmities. Paul tells you right here, as a prophet in the office, he'll glory in and stand right there, eyeball you eye to eye with eyes of steel. As a man, he just steps aside and said, come on, I don't have a thing. I got nothing of myself. <clears throat> Such a one I'll glory, yet of myself I'll not. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. I'll say the truth, for now I forbear any man should think of me above, beseeth me to be, or he heareth me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation that has given me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice it might depart me, and said, My grace sufficiently, my strength make perfect weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I rather glory in my infirmities, the power of Christ may rest upon me. Why? He had a passion for souls. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, reproaches, and necessity, and persecution, and distress for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. I'm become a fool in glory, and you've compelled me. For I ought to have been commended of you, for in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. Truly the signs and apostles are wrought among you in all patience and signs and wonders and mighty deeds. For what is there were in the church, you were inferior in other churches, except that I myself was not a burden to some of you. Forgive me this wrong. Behold, the third time I'm ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you. For I seek not yours, but you for the children, not, not yet for the parents, but the parents for the children. And I'll gladly spend and be spent, though more abundantly love you, the less I be loved by you. He's talking to those that came right to Christ through the ministry that was vindicated. They knew it was right, but like Galatians, they began to turn aside and go to gifts and things which were good, but in themselves being used wrong were no longer good. Be it, but be it so I did not burden you, nevertheless being crafty, I caught you with guile. Did I make a gain of you by any of them whom I sent to you? I desired Titus with him sent a brother. Did Titus make a gain of you? Walk we not in the same spirit, and walk we not in the same place? All right, the verse in here I was looking at <clears throat> was verse 12. Truly, for the signs the apostles wrought among you, and patience and signs in one of these. A vindicated man, but he would not commend himself to them. But he knew he was commended by God to them, but they would not listen. So, <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> the 11th chapter tells us how that these people were beguiled and turned from the vindicated word of Almighty God, even as it says in Matthew 7 concerning false prophets. Line that up with Deuteronomy 18, knowing Deuteronomy 18, knowing the truth, having received it, these people surely had fallen from grace and they were deceived exactly as Eve was deceived because the people coming in behind Paul never had the vindication, but they commended themselves to them. They walked with letters of appreciation and commendation. <clears throat> which was a very, very wrong thing. <clears throat> so, all right, we're looking at commendation. We're looking at approval. And you can see right here that William Branham did not need commendation from anybody. He did not need approval because he was absolutely verified, identified by Almighty God and was God to the people, whether people wanted it or not. Now, with this knowledge and foundation, <clears throat> we ask, how do we qualify? <clears throat> how are we stacking up? What is this all about? This vindication I'm talking about. <clears throat> and stressing tonight again, as I have not previously stressed it, although I perhaps use the same scripture, but in a far different tone, that you might understand this is very, very serious as it plays upon my mind. We go to Romans 9, <clears throat> beginning at verse 14, though I could read the rest because this has to do with Israel as well as the Gentiles. For what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that shows mercy. For the scripture says, even unto Pharaoh, unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, 
that I might show my power in thee, my name might be declared throughout all the earth. <clears throat> now that's Moses vindicated and stand there and says to Pharaoh, listen, Pharaoh, every single thing that's coming to pass, which my God is coming, making come to pass through me, which your God's can try to duplicate through the devil, but finally fall flat on their faces. I want you to get and know this truth. You have been raised up by God for this very purpose. And Pharaoh says, hogwash. Don't give me that bowl of chop suey, which is a bunch of scraps of stuff put together to make it taste good. He eyeballed him right back. <clears throat> said, no way. No way, no way with you and your God. There was a showdown and the man said, no way. <clears throat> Therefore he hath mercy on whom will have mercy and whom will he harden it. Thou wilt then say to me, why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? <clears throat> now Pharaoh's <clears throat> actually playing out his record upon earth <clears throat> that he has to play out because he's defying the children of Israel led by Moses under God. <clears throat> they say, why did he then find fault? Who's written to his will? Nay, but oh man, who are you that replies against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, why hast thou made me thus? Has the potter not power over the clay of the same lump to make a vessel unto honor, one to dishonor? That's the same flesh, all the same flesh, God, same, same everything. <clears throat> what of God willing to show his wrath to make his power known and endure much long suffering, the vessel of wrath fit of destruction, that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessel of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory? Now, what you're seeing here is God Almighty has had a word for the elect, wise virgin, foolish virgin, and the serpent seed. Now, i ask you a question. Do these people have any right to approve or disapprove of God? Here you are. The vindication will do it every time. Because the only time you really know God is there and judging you is if God follows this pattern which God laid out how he by himself will do it and perpetrate it upon you and me in the way he wants it perpetrated and we shut up! And become like Nebuchadnezzar. He ruleth in the heavens and all the armies of the heavens and earth must do his will and be obedient to him. I want to ask you <clears throat> tonight, how much do you approve of God? And I can tell you right now, if you see vindication and know that you're resting upon the truth of God's word and you believe with all your heart and soul and you turn no other place and you care to go no other place, then you are approving. You might not approve the way nature treats you and the way that you have problems in your life. But the first thing is this, are you going to go to that word the way God wants it, the way God gave it, the, the way God revealed it, and say, yes, that's it. And you've got no argument. You've got no fuss with it. <clears throat> How many can believe this message and then hear these people come in and preach and people that I know run to churches, they've been losers, losers. Well, I'll name you three. If I'm not going to do it, I wouldn't dare because these tapes get out. But I can name you three losers I warned on. I haven't warned the third one. I'm not going to bother because he is a loser. <clears throat> he will always go where it isn't. He will always complain. But it'd be ecumenical. Yet when the chips are down, he's not ecumenical because he simply can't take it. Why doesn't he stay there and take it? What's in him trying to get some rest and some peace? What's in him trying to find the truth? We're not running around. A few people are hearing a lot of tapes and looking to other people. Just do me a favor. Just tell me and don't get my tapes anymore. Because all you're going to do is get confused. Please go to hell unconfused or go to heaven unconfused. One of the two. Because this is the hour of rest. And it's not the rest and peace the world gives. Don't think for one minute. It doesn't come out of a bottle. <clears throat> it comes out of what? 
the tie post of a revealed word that's been vindicated. I ask him, are you approving God today? God does not need approval. What does he care what, <clears throat> what <clears throat> Pharaoh says? What's God got to do with Moses? Or Moses got to do with God? What have you got to do with anything? What have I got to do with it? <clears throat> Nothing. It is not commending God. It is not approving God. It is not disapproving God. When we stand here, our mouths are shut. God has spoken. Now let me give you a picture of Pharaoh and where he came from. <clears throat> and Adam knew of his wife and she conceived and sat bore and bare Cain and said, I've gotten a man to the Lord. Again, bear his brother Abel. That's the twin. Abel's the keeper of the sheep. Cain tilled the soil. Cain to pass. Cain brought the fruit of the ground, an offering. Abel brought the firstling. God respected Abel, didn't respect Cain. Cain was very wroth. His countenance fell. And God said, Why are you wroth? Why is your countenance fallen? Thou hast done well, but thou hast not rightly divided. <clears throat> That's the Septuagint. But he said, the sacrifice is there. You can take it. He said, I will not do it. He went and killed Cain. Killed Abel, rather. <clears throat> and the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I don't know. Am I supposed to be my brother's keeper? Know what he's doing? He's out there taking care of the sheep. Get off my back. He just a minute. You've done something wrong. Your brother's blood is crying from the ground. Your brother's blood. The life in the blood is speaking. Now you're cursed from the earth, which opened her mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall not henceforth yield her strength to you. You'll be a fugitive. And Cain says, listen, I can't take this even from you. We said, Brother Bill, he didn't say that. He said, I can't bear it. I'm telling you what it is in 20th century language. I can't take it. I won't take it. You got no right. I like what you're doing. If I had not done the works which no other man did, they had not sinned, but now they've both seen and hated both me and my father. Oh, no. Brother Bear, I love him. Oh, I love him. Brother Branham quoted that verse as to its place, but I don't know. One time he quoted it out loud. I found it on my own. Then I found he read place, chapter, verse, but never the verse to my knowledge. Oh, Brother Bear, I love you. Oh, I love Jesus. What about Brother Branham? Ooh, Ooh I could kill him. Hello, Cain. Hello, Judas. Hello, Pharaoh. Huh? These people that disapprove Moses disapprove God. <laughs> the people that disapprove Jesus disapprove God. The people that disapproved Paul disapproved God. The people that disapproved William Branham disapproved God. And when we approved Brother Branham, we did not approve God. We merely said, yes, that's the word. That's what God does. That's how God does it. Because you cannot approve God, my brother, my sister, and you cannot disapprove him. The thing form cannot say to him, why, why, why? Shut up and sit down because you don't have a think coming. You don't have an opinion coming. And if you have an opinion coming because you think you're a prophet or born again, you'll admit the prophet's word above yours every time you turn around, open or close your eyes, or breathe one breath or tick one heartbeat. It's going to be what the prophet said. You're going to find a way to go with it. <clears throat> now listen to me. When Paul came on the scene, he was not like the 11 other apostles who had learned face to face with the Messiah. He never met Jesus, but he met God himself on the road to Damascus and in the desert Arabia learned exactly what the 11 knew and even a further revelation from Jehovah Elohim, the one who met him. Now, thus when he broke on the scene, how do you think the apostles received him? On what grounds? 
Well, Paul came and said, I have had a beautiful vision. I have witnesses that I was struck off the horse when the light hit me. And they said, yeah, hmm, tell us more. Well, I, I, I never believed in Jesus that you talk about, but I've had some powerful inclinations recently that I think maybe this is the one, hogwash. They took him right to Deuteronomy 18, or I'm gonna miss my guess. <clears throat> And he took himself right to Deuteronomy 18. Because that's what does it. Now, and Brother Branham comes on the scene, can he be accepted? No way except it be God's way of Deuteronomy 18. But how many <clears throat> ever knew about Brother Branham, or if they knew about him, wanted to have anything to do with him? Now, man cannot either approve or disapprove of God <clears throat> as though he is allowed to do so. <clears throat> no matter what, you cannot do it. So, Brother Branham being vindicated by Deuteronomy chapter 18, being that one whom God has chosen by way of the scripture and the only way he does it, <clears throat> then you and I cannot approve or disapprove except on the grounds that we are seed who receive. And he that scatters not with me scatters against me. He that is not for me is, or with me is against me. <clears throat> who is on the Lord's side? Not who is God on your side. No way, shape, or form. So we're looking at the picture here now. <clears throat> when you turn down Paul, you turn down God. Amen. When you turn down William Branham, <clears throat> who broke the seals <clears throat> in order to correct. And remember, the word is correct. You turn down God because he is the voice piece of Almighty God. Now let's see how, what we can find over here in Romans, the 8th chapter. <clears throat> and in Romans 8, 28 to 39, which this is a part of predestination, who be justified, then be also glorified. Then if God before us, who can be against us? And then it says, who shall separate us the love of Christ, shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword? As it's written, for thy sake we're killed all the day long, we're counted sheep for the slaughter. And in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, that's messengers, principalities, and powers, and things present, and things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any creation whatsoever, is able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. <clears throat> now, people right there like to get their backs up against God. We all have a problem with our problems. We fail to glorify God in them. Yet Brother Branham was a man like Paul who could do it. As I mentioned before, a man came to Brother Branham one day, and he said, Brother Branham, the people are saying terrible things about your family. And before he could enumerate them, Brother Branham said, I don't want to hear them. God knew all about it. He predestinated this. I needed it. <clears throat> no matter what happened, Brother Branham like Paul, and he could do it because caught up into the same place where Paul was, to see and know those things which are now ours. To bring back revelation that was sealed up even before the foundation of the world, such as how did the Son come into existence? How was it that God by the Son created all things? What is the mystery of the family of Almighty God? Only William Branham brought that forth and nobody else could do it. <clears throat> See? So people get very confused. They cannot stick to Deuteronomy 18 when other things begin to rise in their faces. And that's what happened back in Paul's day. <clears throat> when the devil, who can operate any gift under high heaven and produce a lot of his own, <clears throat> you know, they're, they're phonies, takeoffs. Like fortune telling is, takes the place of prophet. The real seer, this, the, holds, the man that holds the seance, spiritus, he takes the place of prophet. <clears throat> All right, right there, people will fall for that. See? And when pressures come and they get fearful, they'll drift away. <clears throat> and in that, <clears throat> they are approving or disapproving of God or the way that God does things 
when the scripture tells you, you and I cannot tell God what to do or how to do it and when to do it and where to do it under any consideration. <clears throat> we can only take his word and see where it fits that we have any claim that he's given us by his mercy and by his grace. So I say, who believes <clears throat> Deuteronomy 18? And yet when we read in Hebrews 1, God in the prophets, which is not now simply an office, but a person in a person. God in that person. <clears throat> and in John, over here, 14. <clears throat> uh, and 11. Believe me that I am in the Father, the Father in me, <clears throat> or believe me for the very work's sake. Now, he was a prophet. We always want to forget that he was that prophet. Everybody forgets it. You know why? The Jews don't want him, and the stupid so-called Christians make him not a prophet, but a second person of the Trinity of a Godhead. Hogwash. He was born of a woman, <clears throat> of a sperm and an egg created by God. We'll talk about that another time again, we've, as we have been talking. And he came forth as the son of man. He came forth as the seed of the woman. He came forth as the son of God. He came forth and was that prophet. And God was in that prophet. And he merely fulfilled the role of not merely in the sense, but he perfectly fulfilled the scripture that Moses brought from God. The Lord your God will raise up a prophet from amongst you like unto me. <clears throat> and you can't change it, you can't change it, you can't change it. That's what God did. Then why don't they look at it and believe it? Oh no, they'll skip a while. I'll, I'll hold it. Ah, oh, this second person of the Godhead. We can't demean him by putting him in that little scripture there. Oh no. We're, we're, we're too, too proud and we're too sweet and we're too loyal, we're too loving, we're too patriotic. Oh, we're, oh shut up. You are a liar and the truth isn't in you. Deuteronomy 18 belongs to Jesus. How are you that prophet, they said. <clears throat> he said, Moses spoke of me. Didn't say Isaiah did, he said, Moses spoke of me. Quoted Isaiah, though, too. Well, we're, you know, that's, that's too tiny. That's too tiny. That's God being too, too little. Oh, say, aren't we just stupid bunch of clucks? Huh? When it come, aren't we just a bunch of stupid clucks when it comes right down to reality? Thank God for grace. <coughs> and the influence of Jesus as our high priest and elder brother interceding. I want you to know something. Brother Branham, vindicated by God, and God never took back the vindication, fulfilling Hebrews 4 and 12. Brother Branham absolutely said, God speaking in him, when you see God descend from the heavens and stand before groups of men and declare himself as ever he did in this Bible open before me, that's God in the prophet. Well, I don't know if I'll approve that or not, Brother Vail. <laughs> you know, you know, Brother Vail, there's a lot of these con artists come back. <laughs> yeah. And they fool the old folk. They get on the telephone and <laughs> they just take them for all they got. And, oh, shut up. You make me sick and you make God sick. Yet they claim the blessing of God when the wrath of God abides upon them. <clears throat> Let's go to 1 Corinthians. I like going to the Bible. Yeah, I sure do. That's my job. 1 Corinthians 8, 13, chapter and 8, verse. <clears throat> Charity never fails, but where there be prophecies, they'll fail. Tongues, they're going to cease. Knowledge is going to vanish. We know in part and prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, and it has come, then the part is done away with. And why are you relying on it? It'll be there, but why are you relying on it? 
How can Shelley come and tell about his mother, grandmother bouncing around, sitting on a red hot stove? I don't care if she sits on a red hot stove. Her swallow's the blasted thing. The truth isn't in her and him either. Like grandma or mother, like grandma like son. He's trying to pretend he's a Timothy and he's got a grandma somewhere. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. You can be fooled by dog, vuma, dog vomit thinking it's caviar. Or don't come to me with your dog puke breath. <clears throat> huh? Certainly, I'm not being mean, I'm just telling you. For we know in part and prophesy in part, when that which is perfect has come, that, what, that which in part should be done away. And Brother Bran Branham said, Who is perfect but God? But what is God but his word? And by the grace of God, we have the perfect revelation of the word for this hour. Face to face with Christ my Savior. Face to face. What will it be when in rapture I behold him, Jesus Christ, who died? Me? What about now before you behold him, if you do behold him in the resurrection? Oh, you can sing beautiful songs, and I can sing them too if we were in voice. Huh? Let's go to John, 1 John, <clears throat> the epistle. I've used this many times because it's the truth. Be above it now. That's verse chapter 3. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the born ones of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not <clears throat> because it knew not the born one of God himself, the uniquely born one. Beloved, born ones of God. Now are we the born ones of God. Even at this particular time in this frenzied flesh and this awful life we are living in, Backsliding a thousand times a day, backing away a thousand times a day, as the prophet said. It hath never yet appeared or shall be, and when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now it says he's got to appear, and you've got to see him as he is, to be like him, to be changed. And that tells you it's got to be face to face before the, ra before the rapture and the resurrection. <clears throat> That's just saying, I can read my Bible, people can't read their Bibles. They say the appearing is when you get caught up to him. My Bible says I've got to be changed before I get caught up. No, they, their Bible and mine is the same Bible, but you see, they can't read. You know why? Because their brains aren't baptized with the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> oh, they, but Brother Vail, the brain doesn't enter in. Well, I knew that in your case, <laughs> but not in mine. I'm 84 years old, and I can still shoot a wicked game of pool. And I don't get stuck behind the eight ball. I don't know what that means even. All I know is it's, that's what they tell me. <coughs> What's it all about? I don't know. I care less, but I know the word of God. Now, just a minute here. It says, when no one he shall appear, we should be like him. <clears throat> now, the word appear actually means to render apparent and has the understanding of restore. So, <clears throat> it has to be with bringing the thing into full view. <clears throat> so when he shall appear, it'll be in full view and face to face. And by the way, one of the words and the major word meaning of the word presence is face. The turning of the head in the face. So when he shows his face, There'll be no more darkness. <clears throat> we'll know as we're known. This is that hour. The glory is the greatest glory of the ages. The ministry by a prophet of God, and his name was William Branham, like unto Moses and Paul, <clears throat> came in this last day, brought us the word with the sword of God to dress a bride, lead her in the waters of separation, right down the line to get her all ready, <clears throat> because that's the way it is. And remember, now over here, at the same time, this is going on. We are in Revelation chapter 20, I mean 3, <clears throat> and in verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man open the door and hear my voice, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Now, just a minute, what's happened? This man is on the throne. Now, watch very carefully. When this man is on the throne and he is Joseph, exactly right. The brethren that have hated him are outside 
because they sold him down the road for 20 pieces of silver, 30, whatever they were, <clears throat> a little bit of money. See? Now, so therefore at this time, we have Almighty God putting his own son on the throne. The brethren who hated him, Lutherans, starting with the Catholics, they're the big ones, Lutherans, Wesley, Pentecostals, denied him, kicked him out, but he's on the throne anyway. And now who's he revealing himself to? Just the bride. Just like he's going to do, as Brother Branham described, how he's going to reveal himself to the Jews. <clears throat> there isn't any different. Because this is to the Gentiles. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. You kick me out. I want to get back in again. But he cannot get back to the Pentecostals. They crucified him <clears throat> to themselves, the Son of God afresh. The Methodists don't know a thing about him. They couldn't have him. <clears throat> the Lutherans, <clears throat> they couldn't understand. The Catholics would come very close and then deny it. Because they're the smartest ones of the works. I proved that when I preached this Brother Branham sermon, they know better. I proved that right from their own works. They, the Catholic priest said, when God does these things, it means sit down and listen. I've got something to tell you. <clears throat> so they turned him down. Now, this same one is Ephesians 1 and 17, the Spirit of God coming into the church. And when he does, we revert immediately to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Because until this time, we have not had a prophet to repeat this to us or pull this on us or make us face up to it. And he says in here, what came the word of God out from you or came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, a prophet or full of the Holy Ghost, let him superimpose upon his thinking the things that I have said, the words that I have communicated unto you, knowing they are the commandments of God and have nothing to do with me. <clears throat> That is exactly Deuteronomy chapter 18. That is exactly Romans 9 and 20, the vessel having not one thing to say in approbation or disapproval, in rejection or receiving. He stands there and looks. And if God be for him, who can be against him? Not, over, not even his own nature. <clears throat> not even his own thinking. <clears throat> not even his own training. It'll plague him until he can burn it all up with the word of the living God. But he'll take every word and say, that's right. That's right. And when Jesus said, look in the scripture and see, he says the same thing to you and me tonight through the prophet. Look in the scripture and see, this is Paul, and I'm taking you through the scripture, even to the very place of showing you the personality of the two men blending together, and you cannot say that William Branham was not another Paul, or goodbye, it was not nice knowing you. It wasn't nice knowing you. I thought it was. Now, I'm being very cutting, and you have to appreciate that. Because ain't nobody going to tell it like I tell it. Because you're going to get it the way I tell it, or you're not going to get it. Because this is Lee Vale speaking, and the way I speak. And the prophet said, there's no way it would change. Now you can say, well, Brother Brandon said, that's fine. I will meet you at the white throne, honey. I will meet you at the white throne. I'm one of the few living men that can say that. I meet every one of you. I look you all in the eye. I have no problem. I will be there quoting what the prophet told me. Do what you want about it. I know what I'm doing about it. For he's the one who said, when you see God descend from the heavens, <clears throat> stand before groups of men and declare himself. And he said, those days would return in Luke 17 and 30. And he said in Matthew 12, it would be the Holy Ghost that did it. And instead of destroying the church, <clears throat> as he wiped out Israel, except for the few that's come in through the ages and the 144,000 at the end, they go down in death and defeat, 
the bride goes out in the resurrection and the victory of the rapture <clears throat> and meets her Lord and Savior face to face. Who can reply when God does this? I will tell you, those who belong to the serpent, <clears throat> those who belong to Cain, and they have been doing it and they will do it from the fourth chapter of Genesis to the last chapter of the book of Revelation, over 6,000 solid years. How long? We don't know for sure, but there's six at least in there. So I hope tonight, in fact, I know you have a new slant and a new understanding of indication. And you have a new understanding of whether you approve God or you don't approve God because you ha can't do it. All you can do is like Jesus. There is none so blind as my righteous servant. You blindly follow the voice. And the sheep hear the voice and they follow. And there is none that is lost. No, not one. And there is none that comes in unless he is a sheep who hears the voice. And the voice today was the voice of William Branham, the one standing there by, and we'll go into that tomorrow morning if I can get back with you, because I missed one half of this message. We're going to have to retitle it. It's not vindication and presence. It's simply vindication tomorrow. We deal fresh with the presence as the Lord allows us. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you again for the time we have together, Lord, where we do not come here, Father, to go away as though we have not learned something or learned it even better or to understand our own position relation to you. For we know there is no place where we have a right to be offended, either commending or disapproving. We stand here and our whole life is a yes and an amen to you, O God, for thou art worthy. And no matter what happens, life and death, persecution, famine, peril, nakedness, sword, doesn't matter. It is whatever you want is what you will have. We know that because that's sovereignty. But may we, Lord, have the true spirit of God's grace in us to be happy, happy, Lord, in Jesus Christ. It, like Paul and like others, to bear whatever burden, to suffer whatever is necessary that you want to put us to bring us forth. As Job said, when I come forth, I'm going to be purified by fire. I'll be in his image, tried as I am. It's just to make me what you want me to be. And so, Lord, we give you glory tonight and thank you that you've led us this way. And in spite of fact, with all our scathing condemnation in this message, which I know it has been, we appreciate and love you and know that you have helped us. And we are not here to condemn the world as though this was our word and we are trying to back up this word and make something of it. But it's your word, Lord, and we are hopefully fearlessly declaring it and righteously declaring it in the right spirit. The people must be warned, and they cannot be warned when the flood tides of deception have been turned loose on them. They cannot be warned with mere platitudes or soft speaking. As Brother Branham said, sometimes you have to scream above the roar of the surf. There's death out there, not just danger. So may we understand, Lord, and bring us together, <clears throat> as we said previously, in the spirit of love and harmony. There's those who love each other, anxious to be with us, are happy to be with us, are helping each other, glorifying God in every measure we can, according to the word and the grace and the strength and power within us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Take the name of Jesus